Hi there, came from Turning Bit Repair Guide. Impedance? What the heck is that? So, we usually see it along with the, with an ohm sign, or symbol, going like that. And that leads us to think that this is some kind of resistance in ohms. And it sort of is, but, but it's highly misleading to say that it is because, uh, uh, and that comes now. So this type of resistance only occurs when you have alternating current, AC voltage like the one coming from the wall, from the panel, from the street. Um, and the reason why this only comes along with this kind of voltage is that that kind of voltage, see we have zero here, zero volts, then an alternating current means that it alternates from plus to minus in a, in a sinus curve typically typically and so that's how we'll do that it will run like that out there and 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 simply change from plus to minus plus to minus and change the polarity and why it's it's uh, this resistance occurs then is from uh, when something is being charged or discharged in the circuit that has um, for, for tanning beds and, and most things I mean like applications like uh, and appliances and that sort of thing we're talking about inductive load which is uh, some kind of a coil and um, let me show you a speaker coil here. This thin wire wound it around, and for a tanning bed, it would be the choke ballasts. Uh, you have a bunch of wires winded around an iron core there. And this magnetic field being charged up by this field, uh, or from this voltage, uh, makes this magnetic field rise and fall, rise and fall. And this um, resistance, you can say, in, in that the energy has to get with it and then oh, oh, oh. That's what creates the impedance. That is what creates this resistance. You also have it for capacitors, but that's more of like a, a, a voltage uh, potential kind of uh, uh, storage uh, situation that can actually counter the effects of the inductive load. That's a more complex uh, one for another video. Um, but so when you have AC voltage like this you will have this kind of resistance occurring. Uh, this uh, impedance and not just regular uh, Ohm, which is only really uh, when you have um, when you don't have this uh, field rise and fall kind of uh, scenario going like you have in a in some kind of a coil. So the thing is that let's say that you're looking at a um, a um, All right. So let's say you're looking at a um, at, at some kind of inductor load, like the ballasts, and um, and you want to figure out how much is this going to pull. I mean, we are, you're troubleshooting. What's going on with this ballast? And you just put take your gauge, put it to a resistance, and and measure it. You won't get an a accurate uh, reading because there's actually a lot of inductive load in one of these choke ballasts. So you, you can uh, take another ballast and kind of compare the two with a DC reading like you would get from taking your multimeter and, and measure or, or um, 
own eater. But it's it's definitely not accurate. So um, what happens is that this effect here from from this field um, from this sort of field effect uh, when we're talking about electrical calculation um, you have two effects that can that makes this one in the end and this turning this this effect that, uh, that I'm talking about from from the field is called for inductors is called XL and you also still have the, the DC resistance um, and and you need to put that together with XL and that one is usually called RE so the resistance you usually would measure with the gauge that one and then you have this blind effect the thing is you can't just put them together like that willy-nilly um, but you can use the theoretical approach it's not completely super accurate because actually this this uh, this angle of how much this effect of the uh, it's a more complex uh, uh, I'm trying to make something re pretty complex into simple terms, but just so you know that there's a difference between impedance and uh, and uh, and DC resistance when you're troubleshooting is the important thing. So you don't just and then calculate. You don't just take your gauge and measure with DC, DC um, uh, resistance. And then anticipate some kind of uh, uh, current load there, because your 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 current load calculated would be too high. It, it, that would be something wrong there. So let me show you how you cal you you simply calculate it. That you will take that um, this phase angle as it actually is. I mean, never mind. I mean, for right now, but that it would be ninety degrees. And so you will have on one, you'll have RE, which is that one, and on the other one, you'll have XL. And actually, you can just use uh, Pythagoras uh, to calculate the impedance, which is typically Z as a uh, in the formula. So if you use uh, which, which is then is uh, XL to the power of 2 plus XL to the power of 2 and then the square root of that is equal to Z yeah that that turned into a little bit more than I wanted it to be but just so you know, you can uh, just take your, your gauge, go out, measure on one of these choke ballasts or on a motor, some kind of inductive uh, in a AC circuit. You, you can't count on that reading uh, whatsoever because you will have some of this effect in there. Uh, the, uh, the, the blind effect is also what it's also is called. But, uh, or and this angle down here if you ever you you've heard that expression and, and are wondering what that means you'll have co, co cosinus phi that is the phase angle so this is actually between these two is the phase angle and so you can see that how that will actually also if you had a different angle here that that will actually change the impedance so um, I hope this made some sense of what impedance is. Uh, please comment, uh, or and also if you want uh, something more in detail explained, uh, give me a comment. So uh, Ken from uh, Tanning Bed Repair Guide. Take care, guys. Bye.